As a professional dancer and actress, Robia Scott skyrocketed to international success as a young age, touring with the late singer Prince and guest starring in TV hit shows. So why did she give it up, the glamorous career in Hollywood, to follow Christ? Well, I kind of know the answer to that, but we're going to find out her journey. Welcome back Hi. to The Harvey Show, Thank Robia. You. Thank you. Okay, you me. did have that glamorous life, and a lot of people would say, oh, you could do both. You could live for Christ, be a Christian, and live in Hollywood and be a part of that scene. What do you say to that, and, you know, what was your journey like? Well, I think you can do both if the Lord's leading you to do that. I mean, for me, I was not a Christian at the time that I was a professional dancer, traveling with Prince, uh, and then acting. I became a Christian while I was working on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm -hmm. And so as I started to grow as a Christian, and then I was going to work, especially on that show, which is, you know, a very well-written show, high-quality show, but a lot of the themes were occultish. So as I started to grow in the things of God and then I was going on set and being a part of all these witchcraft type things, mm -hmm. for me there was just a, um, a struggle, a conflict. So I wound up, uh, my time with that show was over and I still continued acting for a few years, but I kept going for auditions and, and there were roles with things that I just didn't want to say and things that I didn't want to do and uh, I just felt like it was not lining up with mm -hmm. me personally. You know, it's interesting that you would say that because I have interviewed so many celebrities before who these celebrities would, would select or choose roles that they, it just was, it's just was a direct, you know, offense to their walk as a Christian, mm -hmm. and yet they would take those roles. But mm -hmm. for you, that was different. Well, I think maybe, you know, some people, they just really perhaps value the Hollywood and, mm -hmm. and going in that direction that was maybe a stronger pull for them. But for me, it wasn't. I just, in my spirit, I just didn't want to do it. And as I started growing in God, I also started to sense that in ministry and this work that I'm doing now was really what I was called to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like God gave me gifts of communication and expression that were used in the arts, um, but were really made... Uh, for his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And uh, meaning you have a ministry and mm -hmm. you go out and you share, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're preaching the gospel basically, That's right? right? That's you right. You are also an author and your new project is called Counterfeit Comfort. Yes. Um, freedom from the imposters that keep you from true peace, purpose, and passion. And I could so relate to this because we all have imposters that invade our lives. And if we're not careful, we substitute we take out God out of the equation mm -hmm. and allow the imposters to take over our lives. Talk about the imposter that um, attracted you or tried to veer you away from your walk with God. Well, for me, the main counterfeit comfort in my life was food. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was, even when I became a Christian, I was still struggling in this area. And so I just didn't understand, you know, God, I'm getting free in all these other areas as I'm growing deeper in you. But this area with food, it was just such bondage. And that's when the Lord really spoke to my spirit about counterfeit comforts. I heard him say, food is not your problem. It's you're using food as a counterfeit for comfort. And I want you to learn how to come to the true comforter, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. So, you know, we all have, the, I really think everyone, I don't know anyone who doesn't have a, a counterfeit. Oh, right, for you sure. You know, there's so many. Um, when I think about counterfeit comforts and, you know, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you so that you can be aware of what's happening and you don't just rely on feelings. It goes back to a relationship and developing intimacy with God. Right. And so you also talk about the need for prayer and hearing God's voice. Right. I would probably say that's a huge challenge for many Christians. How do you even start that process? That's what really breaks my heart a little bit when I speak to Christians. And in the years I've been doing ministry now, I would mm -hmm. have to say that's the number one thing that I hear uh, from men and women, that they want to hear from God and they have not been able to hear from God. Yet they've been Christians for years and decades and have never had a personal experience and encounter with God. And sometimes it's even taught that that's not really for today. You know, that, right. that to hear from God, you have mm -hmm. to be maybe chosen from God or a prophet yes. of old to hear yes, from God. Yes, an evangelist. Yeah, a special, a special person. person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. So if you're a sheep, mm -hmm. you're made to hear God's voice. 
So I really go deep in this book about kind of how to guide people into that place where they can have a personal experience and a personal encounter. You know, I really believe as a teacher, a good teacher gives you answers, but a great teacher teaches you how to get into the place with God where he can give you your answers. Mm -hmm. And as you start this process, what's, you know, name some of the steps. I mean, you know, I guess I shouldn't say that because it's always, we're always looking for that quick fix. Right. That's how we end up with an imposter to call a counterfeit right. comfort in mm -hmm. our lives anyway. Um, just, you know, I guess it starts with that relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's no quick that. fix. The first thing the Lord told me to do mm -hmm. when I was trying to transfer the dependent, dependence, <clears throat> he's so funny, God is funny. He reminded me uh, when I was a young girl in grade school and he reminded me in a fire drill. Uh, what the teachers would always tell you in a fire drill, if you were on fire, they always said, don't run, don't run. You want to stop, drop, and roll. And the Spirit actually brought that to my mm -hmm. mind and said, that's what I want you to do. When you are on fire, so to speak, emotionally, things are going on with you, you're uncomfortable, you're, you know, you're having strong feelings, you want to run to a counterfeit. You want to run to cigarettes. You want to run to alcohol, whatever anyone's counterfeit might be. But he's like, I want you to practice stop, drop, and roll, which very simply means just stop where you are. See if you can stop that knee-jerk reaction to go and medicate and see if you can just take a moment mm -hmm. and come into my presence ask the Holy Spirit, where am I right now? What am I even feeling? You know, what's going on with me? And allow the Holy Spirit to take you in instead of being so um, active and external. You know, one of the things um, <clears throat> God showed me, uh, we're so busy. We're so busy. It's so hard to be still. Sure. The Bible says, be mm -hmm. still and know that I am God. And there's such warfare against all of us to just be still. And actually an acronym for busy, being under Satan's yoke. Perfect. Isn't that good? Yes. I know. You better, what, trademark that or uh, what isn't is that it called? Good? <laughs> Brand that exactly. right quickly. Because there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, achieving and being productive, mm -hmm. but there's a drive, a spiritual drive that wants to keep us constantly moving, constantly moving, doing things so that we're never reflective, we're never pondering, we're never being still, where we can actually connect with the Holy Spirit and go deep with ourselves and with mm -hmm. Him. And when I, I'd imagine the response to your message is just very oh, is powering, empowering, because people want to know that they can hear from God, that they don't have to spend 30 days fasting to do that. No. Nothing's wrong with fasting right? and prayer. Mm -hmm. We should do those things. Yes. But he says that if we hunger and thirst after him, that he will respond to us. Not yes. next week. We can expect him to start speaking to us, right? What I find is often in our Christian world, there's a lot of concepts mm -hmm. that I hear, you know, just abide in the vine, just focus yes. on the cross. Cliches. Like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. How do I do that? What does abide in the vine mean? So I'm, uh, I'm really focused on giving practical, applicable, biblical tools mm -hmm. so that you can connect and have that relationship. What's one other, another thing you'd like to talk about? Because I think just hearing this message, I know it's, you know, breaking up some um, misunderstandings that I have about prayer, mm -hmm. you know, and, and sometimes when we go to God in prayer, is he upset with us? Is mm. he, you know, I don't always mm. have the best attitude or something like that. That's an important one because I, think that many of us might have an idea of God as being a very critical, mm -hmm. judgmental God. So even as, as believers, we're, part of us, we're trying to draw close to him, but deep down there's a part of us that's keeping him at arm's length at the same time because we might be scared that if we actually hear his voice, he's going to tell us all the things we're doing wrong and maybe shame us or criticize us. Mm -hmm. So I have to say that is not the God of the Bible. <laughs> you know, God, the Holy Spirit will convict us so there's a little sense what conviction is, but it's uplifting. It's, it's with love. It's conviction is, I see what you're doing and I want to set you free from that. Not like a finger pointing, shaming, you're a bad sinner. So once we really start to understand the nature of God and we know that it's safe to go into his presence and all that we're going to find there is good, then it sort of drops that wall and helps people to, um, to be able to push into that because they know it's going to be a good thing and not a scary thing. Well, we have about a minute left. I want you to look into your camera and just reach out to people who are struggling. You know, just affirm them. Let them know how much God loves them and how these imposters can really help hurt us and not help us. They, they take us away from God, not lead us to Him. Just right. look into your camera. I just want to encourage you if you are struggling in a certain area, I understand. I was there. I was a, a, a girl who was just desperate for freedom. And let me tell you, God is real. God is real. 
And if you understand how to connect with him, you know, the Bible says, Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So once we have the knowledge of who God is and how to really know him personally, there is nothing there's nothing too big for him. We serve an all things are possible God. So I just thank you, Lord, to those that are listening right now that are struggling with food, with alcohol, with depression, with anxiety, that um, through knowing you and through the words and counterfeit comforts that they would be able to connect with you and get free from everything that's hindering them in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, amen. amen. You know, we have some extra copies of a Counterfeit Comforts. And if you are one um, of the first three or four individuals to write in at liveatlacy.com with your name and mailing address, we'll send you one, an autographed copy. Would you autograph I would love to. Yeah. Okay. To connect with Robia, go to robiaministries.org or visit harvest-tv.com for a link to her new project. It's called Counterfeit Comforts. Harvest will continue in just a moment.